What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, there is a secret rare that we have not yet had a chat about from EX2 Digital Hazard. And rather than be sad about this and, and feel like I've let you down, why don't we have a good old chat about Gallant Mon Crimson Mode? Now, what we got here is a level 7, right? So, 15 cost to play normally, 6 cost to digivolve, 15,000 power. Yes, those numbers are incredibly high, but it's also exactly what we would expect from a level 7. Nothing to see here. I should mention, we've also got a cheeky level 6 that we need to look at in this video because, well, it doesn't really fit anywhere else. And we've got a really ridiculous donkulous skill here translations from the lovely folks at nsand gaming and the lovely folks at digimoncard.dev when you digivolve delete all of your opponent's digimon with the highest power i know i love this i absolutely love this now this can range from meh to amazing like, generally speaking, what you're going to do is you're going to take out your opponent's biggest, baddest Digimon. That's generally what we do here. We look at your opponent's board and we're like, oh, you've got a 10,000 power Digimon. Boom, it's gone. Or you got a 12,000 or whatever it might be. But it gets better for you, worse for your opponent. Because if your opponent's managed to get two 12,000 power Digimon out, but nothing more than that, then both those 12,000 power Digimon go in one shot. And so on and so forth it's amazing ladies and gentlemen it's absolutely amazing it reminds me very much of the omnimon that we got right back in bt1 now that was there was more choice with omnimon you got to essentially name a digimon and then any digimon that shared the name with it would be deleted and this is not a million miles away it's not the same let's be clear but you are basically going right your most powerful digimon let's get it and let's also get any other Digimon that share a power with it. My worry with skills like this, and it is a legitimate worry, is that you might want to hold off. You might be looking ahead and going, well, you know, two turns time, I'm likely to be able to take out three giant Digimon, but I kind of want to get my Gallopmon out now, and that's where it gets awkward. It's just part of the deal. It's also worth bearing in mind, your opponent's going to have to play around this. If your opponent knows you're playing Gallopmon Crimson mode, they essentially have to play assuming it's going to hit the field at some point. Which means that they can't really ever get two giant 12,000 power Digimon out, not unless they are really living life on the edge, because losing both of them is going to lose them the game. It's a great skill and I love it. But there's another skill here whereby when you are attacking, trash one card from the top of your opponent's security... And you increase the number of cards trashed for every 10 cards in your opponent's trash. And this, incidentally, is why you don't want to just hold off on attacking your opponent and getting Gallopmon rolling. Yes, the first skill is good. But might I suggest that the second skill is actually a little bit better. Because first of all, every time you attack, that's a card gone from their stack. Every time. No ifs, buts, or maybes. You attack, they lose a card. Jobs are good in. But it's so much more than that. Because it could be two cards, or three cards, or maybe even more. Probably not, if I'm honest with you. 20 cards in your opponent's trash, three cards. That's about as high as, as, high as can realistically be expected. But let's not go pretending this is anything other than absolutely brilliant. This is going to make your opponent extremely sad. You attack and they lose security. And you're trashing security. So any security skills on Digimon or option cards aren't activating here. They are just going down. And obviously, there are certain decks that are going to be ooh, hurt harder here. Take purple decks with stuff like Impmon that love self-milling and filling up their trash so they can play from the trash. This is going to be a phenomenal counter to those kind of decks. Those kind of decks ain't going to be coping, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, it's extremely similar to Gallantmon. When attacking, trash one of your opponent's security cards for every 10 cards in their trash. And Gallantmon has been a good deck to see play. The difference is, Gallantmon Crimson Mode always gets one. And then you get an extra one for every 10 cards in your opponent's trash. Whereas Gallantmon just gets one for every 10 cards. So this is inarguably better. It's just always getting an extra one. It's 
It's brilliant, quite frankly. This is a stunning card, which I think is going to see a whole bunch of play. The Digivolution skill that just can wipe your opponent's board of all their good Digimon, great. And let's not forget, of course, if you're playing against like a Rookie Rush deck, they might have six 4,000 power Digimon. And if that's the highest they've got, or even against any deck they're struggling to set up, then yes, you will get all of them. And then you think, you know, if my opponent's got 20 cards in their trash and I attack the stack... Well, I trash one normally, then I trash an extra two because they've got 20 cards in their trash. Then I actually do my security check, and that's four cards right off the bat. And I've only got five to begin with. This is going to add up very, very quickly indeed. I think this is a five wassy card. This, to me, seems like the kind of card where it's just going to... It's going to overwhelm your opponent. I think it's going to be pretty gosh darn great. But we also need to take a look at a level six green Digimon here. It's Parasimon. And this one looks, honestly, quite nice. 11 cost to play normally, 3 cost to ninja evolve, 11,000 power. And at the end of your attack, you may place this Digimon at the bottom of one of your Digimon's Digivolution sources. Okay, that's pretty cool. But then what it does as an inheritable skill is it gives you security attack plus 1, and an extra 2,000 power. And the translations we've got, and like I say, these dudes are pretty gosh darn good at their translations, are that this can go under anything. So this is a green level 6, and I do think it needs to be played in a green deck, because otherwise you're not evolving into it, you're hard casting it, and I don't want to hard cast this as an 11. I want to did evolve up for free cost, let's be clear. But then I can put it in anything, any green deck, any hybrid green deck, anything along those lines. And I'm getting extra security attack. And I'm getting an extra 2,000 power as well. In any kind of one turn win deck. Where you're looking to gain extra security attack. And just power your way through. This is brilliant. Like Mega Gargamon. Is a deck I quite like. It's a deck I've had a bunch of fun with. Now. I'm not saying it's the best deck ever. It's just a nice example. Generally speaking, if your opponent has arrested Digimon, which they will, you got security attack plus one. So now all of a sudden, this turns in from an 11,000 power taking out two security to a 13,000 power taking out three. Bearing in mind, a lot of level sixes have 11 and 12,000 power. So boosting from 11 up to 13 is genuinely really, really, really important. And it's something which is, it, it's going to win you games. I think is fair to say. Or we can look at the promo Granku Wagamon that's got Digiburst 2, and that gives one of your Digimon security attack plus 1 for the turn. And then when you combine it with this, they've got security attack plus 2, and they've got the extra 1,000 power. And while we're here, although I don't think it's the best use of the card, let's be perfectly clear, this does actually make Digiburst a little better. Because you're putting extra evolution sources down, and of course, you've got to discard security sources to use Digiburst. So the more security sources you have, the more often you can use Digiburst. This gives you extras. Life is good. Once again, do not actually think this is the best use for it. It's just a fun little example of another thing you can do with it. If, you, if you're looking for that kind of thing, if you want some other examples. But honestly, we don't need a lot more. Extra security attack. Extra power. And then all of a sudden, you're probably going to win. And it doesn't have to be this. You know, you could put this under a Digimon that's got jamming, for instance. And then just take advantage of that. Just sit there, you know, the Ogamon from BT1. It's a nice level 4 with jamming. Whack this under Ogamon. You've got jamming. You're not being deleted by security cards. And then you also get to take out extra security. That could work. This could be fun. And there's a million different ways to use it. My one reservation about the card, and it is a fairly big reservation, is that it's a level 6, and you get all the way up to your level 6, then you attack, and then it's just an inheritable skill. You're just using it as a digivolution source. And I worry this is a lot of effort to get that into play. Not saying you can't, you shouldn't, or you won't. I'm saying that is something you need to bear in mind. Yes, it is a phenomenal inheritable skill, and I don't think anyone can seriously argue that it isn't. However, you do need to bear in mind you've got to jump through some hoops to get it, and then you've lost your level 6, and you can't evolve it into a level 7, and it all gets a bit awkward.
So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, wait, no, Wassy score for that one. Between three and four Wassies. We don't give half Wassies. That would be barbaric. Good card with lots of potential worry. It might be a bit awkward. The star here is clearly Gallantmon Crimson Mode. It is a new secret rare, and it's one that I think might end up being really over-the-top good. But I want to know what you think. So let me know in the comment section, would you? Go nuts! Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk Digimon and a whole bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching Wasi Plays.